Welcome, everyone, to another edition to As Above, So Below Radio. I'm your host, Martin Hodgson, and it gives me great pleasure to have you tuning in today. When you get a chance, please visit the website holisticadvocate.com and sign up for my free newsletter. Also, take a moment to subscribe and become a member. You'll not only gain access to the commercial-free subscriber-based interviews, but also treat yourself to an assortment of fascinating people worth listening to. Today's guest is Alfred Labramont Weber. Alfred is an American author, lawyer, futurist, peace activist, environmental activist, and a space activist who promotes the ban of space weapons. Alfred also served as a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Commission. With his frenetic schedule, he also manages an official website called exopolitics.com. Join me in welcoming Alfred as he discusses exopolitics. First of all, Alfred, I want to give you a warm welcome uh, for being on As Above, So Below Radio. Uh, for any of our listeners out there, um, can you give us a brief introduction, uh, any key highlights as to what got you started on your path towards discussing, in this case, this topic with you, which is uh, exopolitics? Sure. Um, well, I, I'm a futurist. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I live in Vancouver, Canada, mm -hmm. and um, the way that I got started in this was in at the end of 1972, I was general counsel of the Environmental Protection Administration of the City of New York under Mayor John Lindsay, mm -hmm. and at that time, I felt uh, like the positivist paradigm Mm -hmm. that we were operating under. That, that is that everything is rational in this 3D reality and, you know, you just apply the the mind of, of the canon of science and it's all going to be solved. And I felt that that, that was not really uh, uh, solving all the problems that we had. Right. And, and toward the end of 1972, I began reading in books that were just coming out on multidimensional reality. Wow. Um, most notably, uh, Ostrander and Schroeder's Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, uh, Ostrander and Schroeder, once I published my first book, mm -hmm. actually became friends of mine. <laughs> oh, wow. We're, we were published by the same, by, by the same publisher. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, at the end of 70, right at the beginning of 73, I, I reached out and uh, um, I contacted a, a, an expert, a professor of experimental psychology at Rutgers University, mm -hmm. who was both an expert in parapsychology Right. Uh, which is the study of non-local consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, telepathy, ESP, precognition, uh, as well as the afterlife, mm -hmm. the scientific study of life after death. Right. And he was an, ex an expert in extraterrestrial studies. Right. And those are kind of the, the subjects of exopolitics. Mm -hmm. Concurrently, in my governmental work, uh, John Lindsay... Uh, the mayor of New York felt that he wanted to run for president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't, was not called to go down that, that route. Mm -hmm. So I decided to leave my government job and to go full time into multi dimensional reality mm -hmm. and working in that field. And I've never looked back since. And it's been, what, 40 years wow. since 23. We're now in 2013. I can't believe it, but it's 40 years. Wow, that's amazing. Now, you believe that we live on a planet that's been quarantined, at least that's my understanding, uh, that in effect we've been purposely isolated uh, because of our lack of spiritual development, right? Um, but you also claim that we're in that pivotal stage where, you know, all that's going on here, 
um, you know, frenetic life and so forth is going to change soon. Uh, can you go into that? I'm just curious. I mean, we have, you know, I'm going to name these. I mean, we have the chemtrails, Fukushima, a possible World War III scenario in the Middle East. Um, but it's my understanding that we're also in the process of ascending as a planet, you know, as a race. Um, so I think that there there is a faction that wants to suppress our hopes uh, for a better life. Um, and then there's another faction that says, no, wait a minute, you know, we determine our fate and our reality. And what's out there, at least for, you know, for the masses and the planet is much, much more better. Uh, what's your perspective on that? Well, I I think that I that I like to go back to basics mm -hmm. to the multiverse that that we inhabit. Right. And in my next book, which is coming out at uh, at the beginning of 2014, mm -hmm. is called Dimensions: The Ecology of the Multiverse. Right. And and uh, if so that. Uh, we are in, uh, to make a long story short, mm -hmm. what science teaches us now, and these are the experimental, the experimental results of a um, U.S. secret time travel program mm -hmm. in uh, the 1968 to 73 period, called, uh, run by DARPA, called Project Pegasus. Right. And that is that we're in a time-space hologram, and uh, uh, this this um, uh, this project, which I know about because I've I've interviewed uh, and worked with extensively one of the principal whistleblowers from the uh, time-space U.S. secret time-space program, mm -hmm. Andrew D. Bashago. Right former U.S. chrononaut. And in fact, this U.S. secret program um, time-traveled my book, Exopolitics, which was published, written in 1999, mm -hmm. published as a, as a trade book in 2005, and they time-traveled it back to 1971, where it was seen by uh, three witnesses, including... Andy Bashago, and where it was dispersed among <clears throat> CIA and Department of Defense, DARPA mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. analysts. And at that time, as I mentioned, I was general counsel of the EPA. Right. And uh, I was called into a meeting with about 50 DARPA and CIA analysts mm -hmm. who had seen my book that I would right in 1999 that would be published in 2005 and there I was in 1971 wow. because they wanted to look me over and I call that time travel surveillance mm -hmm. now so I, I I've actually experienced this time travel surveillance I haven't time traveled but something that I created did and time, time travel and that and that's this book and in terms of time science uh, we know that the time-space hologram in which we live is composed of multiple timelines. Right. And these timelines can vary uh, uh, in, their, in their quality. They can be more or less uh, beneficent, say. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let's say if, if you look at your... Uh, put your hands out and you have five, your kind of 10 fingers. They are, timelines are like lanes on a super highway. Right. And so if you look at the five fingers of your hand, say on your right hand, those could be more positive timelines mm -hmm. to where your, your, the pinky on your the small finger on your right hand could be the most positive Heaven on Earth a timeline. I, I'm just speaking. Mm -hmm. I'm just speaking metaphorically so that people understand mm 
-hmm. And on the left side, it could be more catastrophic timelines so that your little finger could be hell on earth. And so uh, realities can shift timelines. They can actually shift realities. And so uh, uh, there are forces on earth that have predicted a catastrophic timeline and that are trying to achieve it. And there are forces on earth that are living out a more positive timeline Mm -hmm. and that are achieving it. And what I believe has happened is, or may have happened, and I've, and I've written quite extensively on this, starting with my first book in 1973, mm-hmm. The Age of Cataclysm, right. is that uh, the, the early New World Order, mm-hmm. back in the late 60s and 1970s, first, that's when they first achieved time travel. And uh, and we know uh, from Project Pegasus that uh, there was a one-time chronovisor probe in 1971 uh, to Washington, D.C. in the year 2013 which found the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court building, under 100 feet of brackish water. Hmm. Concurrently, in 2010, a colleague of mine, Dr. Courtney Brown, conducted the largest study of military-trained remote viewers in in, uh, 2010, and they found... Uh, a global coastal event in June of 2013 Hmm. in which all major coastal cities, Sydney, Australia, Washington, D.C., you know, you name all the major coastal cities and it was there, Mm -hmm. were virtually destroyed by a global coastal event. This is where you have tidal waves and things of that sort. And so Washington, D.C. was in the same way congruently with the 1971 one-time chronovisor, it's a time travel probe, Mm -hmm. uh, to the year 2013. And the Farsight Institute 2010 probe by Dr. Courtney Brown Mm -hmm. did not know about the DARPA probe. Right, 1971, and yet they came to the same thing in the year 2013, and Dr. Courtney Brown found it, the Farsight Institute, in June. Well, here we are. <clears throat> the date of today's interview is August 2nd. Right. Gene, we haven't had anything, mm-hmm. and shortly before June 2013, Dr. Courtney Brown came out and made a public <clears throat> video in which he said. That the that the uh, 2013 global coastal event took place quote in another timeline hmm. end quote. So so to to get back to your to your question that there are all sorts of people using chemtrails and you know all of these tools which are which are designed to push the Earth toward a mass extinction event. The problem is that they're they're running on programs which have been put forth Hmm. by uh, controllers who are reading off of instructions or assumptions that we're on a catastrophic timeline in our particular universe. Right. Whereas, in fact, we're on a positive timeline. And this is all of the paradoxes that are coming to light as humanity learns about time science. And and fortunately for us, in my opinion, 
we live in a reality which is on a positive timeline. So you have all of these screaming headlines, you know, it's the end of time, it's the end of the earth, you know, coming in this, and yet humanity manages to go through. Now, there are all sorts of theories going along mm -hmm. about the catastrophic timeline and the positive timeline. Right. One theory is that, oh, right now it looks, it could be that there are two timelines which are proceeding apace, and at some point they're going to diverge, and some people will go off on some other, some another timeline, and some people will go off on a positive timeline. Mm -hmm. and it depends where their deeper souls have to go for their next lessons and incarnations. Right. Because... You know, some people just see the world in that way, and they need some more, they need kind of a hard landing for a few more lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, however, this is in the realm of hypothesis and speculation. And uh, uh, in terms of the positive timeline, the reality as a futurist that I'm projecting is that by 2025, we're going to be landing the positive timeline on Earth in terms of policies. Right now, we're feeling all the chemtrails because we have as our decision makers, as our rulers, the selected henchmen of the New World Order. Mm -hmm. And the, this is something that's been in play since at least 1945, the end of World War II. And so these are institutions that churn all of this out, the U.S. government, the U.K. government, the CIA, all the alphabet agencies are just churning all of this out. Mm -hmm. but, but the positive timeline that I envision is that by 2025, which will be, what, about 12 years from from now, we're having new leadership come in. There'll be a breakdown of the old order. There'll be breakthroughs to a new order, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, that that is that is you know basically what is going to occur. Mm -hmm. And and so um, uh, the major leap that I have done as a, as a futurist is 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 to is to develop a series of policies uh, that will help us uh, to move along that positive time timeline and will help us as a society uh, uh, anchor and ground a positive timeline uh, so that when we do arrive at 2025 we'll be on that and and we will have moved all of those uh, instabilities and system busters you know all of those chemtrails and ecocidal policies out of the way mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you like, I can go into some of those policies. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'd like to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, me, let me just kind of uh, bring them up now. Sure. And uh, uh, it'll take me just a moment because uh, I'll bring this up. I just have to go in here uh -huh. and... Uh, uh, bring these up now sure. um, you know it's interesting you stated um, that we are on a positive timeline are you just just out of curiosity are you familiar with the books written by Dolores Cannon oh sure yeah she had written a series of books called the Nostradamus series yes and uh, you know basically I mean my understanding is that he presented the worst case scenarios to her uh, so that by presenting these worst-case scenarios, we can get our act together. And with the power of group mind, 
we can actually change our, our fate, our destiny. Um, because my understanding is that we should have been already in a third world war by now, based on his prophecies. And the Antichrist should have been already on the scene, wreaking havoc, you know, upon humanity. Right. Right. So, yeah. so uh, we we are in this, and and so we have changed like lanes. We we have changed lanes in the superhighway inside the time space hologram right. that we're in, and. Uh, in terms of the ecology of the multiverse, uh, uh, we are we are inside what what I would call the exopolitical dimensions mm -hmm. of the multiverse. There are spiritual dimensions to the multiverse, which are things like the afterlife, mm -hmm. where the intelligent civilizations of souls are, are based. Right along with spiritual uh, beings, along with what we call source or God. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the souls migrate into or teleport into this dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, say if, if you have a series of souls that want to incarnate into uh, as earthling humans on this and this earthly dimension, mm -hmm. And I'm describing all of this not from a belief system, but from parapsychological research, right? Afterlife research, but uh, uh, so so uh, uh, now uh, inside the time in inside the time space hologram. The rules of time science apply, right? And, and so, uh, uh, what 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 we realize is that certain conditions have made it such, and there's a whole continuity of forces, mm -hmm. including our desire to manifest a positive timeline. But it's built into the structure of the multiverse. Right. I mean, it, into our our universe and uh, one estimate of the number of universes in our multiverse. This is right at the edge of science. We're just beginning to mm -hmm. know the number of universes in our multiverse. And one estimate is 10 to the 10th to the 10th to the 7th. Wow. That's a humongous number yes. of universes in our multiverse. And these are just the estimates that the scientists are you know, now be beginning to work with the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, what my book is bringing forth, the ecology of the multiverse, is what we define as the true multiverse. Because the scientists who are, who are working with super string theory are saying, oh, the multiverse is just defined as the total of, total number of physical universes. But our definition, which we show through empirical science that, that demonstrates the existence and nature of the afterlife, the existence and nature of, of the intelligent civilization of souls, of spiritual beings, and the, the existence and nature of source or God, mm -hmm. um, is that the true multiverse includes not only the physical universes, but the spiritual dimensions and the totality of that is the multiverse. Right. So even there, we're pushing and expanding the definition of canonical science, excuse me, of science beyond what the con what this canon of science is, is doing in super string theory, because they just deal with the physical universes, but we say no. It's this is all about soul. Soul is creating this. God is creating this. And and it and uh, one definition, one working definition of God, is that. And this comes from over seven thousand cases of hypnotic regression of soul memories mm -hmm. of the interlife. 
is that source or God that is creating the exopolitical or the physical universes includes source or God itself, plus the totality of the spiritual beings, plus the totality of the intelligent civilization of souls. Mm -hmm. Because souls are created as, as holographic fragments of God. Right. And to use a metaphor, God would be a sea of light and souls are like eggs of light from that sea of light, i.e. They're, they're holographic fragments. In other words, the totality of the whole of God is contained in each soul mm -hmm. by the principles of what a hologram is. Right. So each of us is actually a holographic fragment of God and is actually involved in the process of creation of all of this physical creation that we're part of, mm -hmm. including our bodies. Right. And and this thing. Now, let me diverge then and get sure. back to the to to your question, mm -hmm. which which was how how is it that we're seeing this divergence between a catastrophic timeline and a positive timeline between mm -hmm. The chemtrails and the World War Three and all, all these things and the promise of a utopia on Earth or a heaven on Earth and and again this 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 comes in on I believe on time science and on and on how it's possible to shift timelines inside the time space hologram and on how by 2025 it is reasonable to show that the, the old systems will have broken down and the new systems will have broken through to an extent and the leadership, the new leadership will have broken through such that new policies will be in place globally such as the old destructive policies will be a thing of the past, there will be a chapter. Mm -hmm in the past and what I'm going to say now uh, uh, is 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 something that may sound a little shocking to some people uh, but it is in keeping with this it, it is within the context of what I just enunciated about looking forward to 2025 into a process of breakdown breakthrough mm -hmm. into a process of profound consciousness transformation and uh, this is uh, on behalf of myself Alfred Lambermont Weber I'm a futurist an exopolitician and a war crimes judge mm -hmm. and this is my statement seeking the office of Secretary General of the United Nations mm. for the term starting January 1st, 2017, or if I don't succeed then, January 1st, 2021. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've picked up a number of very important endorsements so far. So this is kind of gaining some kind of traction. And what I'd like to do is just state, make a short statement and then list the policies which people then will, will, will see mm -hmm. how this is how collectively we can build a, build a positive timeline, a positive future. Right. Ban Ki-moon, who's the current Secretary General, ran unopposed for a second term as Secretary General of the United, States, uh, the United Nations. On 21st June 2011, he, ran, he was unanimously re-elected by the General Assembly and therefore will continue to serve until 31 December 2016. I'm putting myself forth as a candidate for Secretary General of the United Nations for the term starting January 1st, 2017. Mm -hmm. My name to be supported and put forth by citizens of the world. If I do not succeed in gaining the office of Secretary General starting January 1st, 2017, I will seek to be nominated Secretary General for the term starting January 1st, 2021. Under Chapter 15, Article 97 of the United Nations, quote, the Secretary General shall be appointed by the General Assembly upon the recommendation of the Security Council. Now, uh, 
So, uh, and to interject a reality check mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to do in this, quote, campaign to be Secretary General of the UN, either for the term of January 1st, 2017 or January 1st, 2021, mm -hmm. first of all, the nomination of a Secretary General requires the approval of the Security Council, where the USA, Russia, China, the UK, and France can veto it. I mean, any, any one of those countries can veto mm -hmm. any nomination, and you need the vote of a majority of the General Assembly. So under present conditions, to think that I... Alfred Weber, a futurist living in Vancouver, Canada, mm -hmm. would be nominated Secretary General is absurd. I mean, it's, if I went up there now, it's just totally absurd. Mm -hmm. So I'm undertaking this initiative for multi-level reasons. Right. One of which is to use this as a public platform to showcase the policies that humanity could have mm -hmm. to create a positive future at a planetary level. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the key elements of the policies that I would work to implement in parallel as Secretary General. Mm -hmm. Number one, extraterrestrial disclosure. Right. Number two, a ban on environmental war, mm -hmm. on mind control, on surveillance technologies uh, such as HARP, chemtrails, electronic and quantum access technologies used as weapons. Number three, a ban on war as a dispute resolution me method, a ban on production of, sale of, war arms systems, nuclear weapons, and a ban on armed forces, a ban on weapons in space. Number four, quantum access, time travel and teleportation. The implementation of teleportation as a global transportation system replacing fossil fuel vehicles, trains, buses, trucks, and autos, and replacing the land use, the massive land use, especially in the inner cities of highways, uh, freeways, and, rail and railways. Mm -hmm. Number five, public and private debt forgiveness. Number six, Money, the, the introduction of money as a public utility for creative invention and investment. In other words, it's a public utility in the same way that water and electricity is. Right. Um, number seven, the banning of private central banks and private banks altogether, private commercial banks. Number eight, a guaranteed annual income for every person on the planet from birth. You have a guaranteed annual income. Number nine, guaranteed advanced health care and life extension for every person on the planet. Number 10, direct virtual democracy at global, national, and local levels. In other words, right now, it's a given that advanced warfare is run cybernetically. Uh, all of the major powers in order to run their wars, be it the war in Afghanistan and Iraq, wh wherever, they're operating the, the, these weapons remotely and virtually through uh, very advanced forms of the Internet mm -hmm. that cannot be penetrated. So there is a technology, there's a virtual technology that cannot be hacked, mm -hmm. that exists. Right. That technology can be applied to civil purposes, which is personal, direct, virtual democracy, mm -hmm. where every citizen can vote directly on laws. So we take the, the Swiss canton model. The way that Swiss democracy works is that you have a canton, which is a Swiss village, and they don't have city councils or village councils. Everybody goes to the square and they determine policy. You know, they say, we want this out of the other thing, and they vote on laws mm -hmm. to apply to their village. There is no middle person, be that a city council, 
a parliament or a congress or a world government at the at the world level. Mm -hmm. And why is that good? Because invariably in representative government, if you have representatives, they get taken over and compromised by the powers that be, by the large powers that have money, mm -hmm. invariably. Right. And representative government is something that came in in the 17th century. Mm -hmm. You know, is it better than monarchy? Right. You know, but and now we've had enough of representative government, which has been taken over. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you have to look is at 21st century Washington, and you know there is no representative no. government. It's been None whatsoever. taken over by corporate corporatisms, and it's been taken over by NSA, CIA. Mm -hmm. There, they are, there are. There is no more representative. Absolutely. So, you, so you've got to toss that out, right. and you've got to say we want virtual democracy at the local level, at your cities, no more city councils. What it is is that every voter in the city votes on mm -hmm. the policies, and then you have a government which is in charge of picking up the garbage, you know, carrying out all of the governmental functions, the police function, the garbage function, all of that. Mm -hmm. These are municipal employees, a civil service, mm -hmm. uh, a city manager at the state level. There's no more state governments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, you know, there, there's no more state legislature. This is virtual democracy. The citizens of the state vote on the laws. And then it's carried out by a state government, which has a state manager and all the civil service there that does X, Y, and Z. The same thing at national levels, be it in, you know, a federal system or a provincial system, you know? Right. Um, and so this is the next phase of government after representative government. It served us from the 16th century. By the time we got to the 21st century, Kabui right. is right. gone. So you, uh, il you eliminate work to eliminate bodies like the UN, parliaments, congresses, city councils, etc., which essentially have become tools of the powers that be, and you replace it by a new innovation. Number 11, the space program as a public utility. These are all on behalf of the public. Number 12, restorative justice for war crimes victims. The entire human race has become war crime victims, but more so others than not. The, um, the entire uh, Central Asia, Iraq, Afghanistan have been bombarded with depleted uranium weapons mm -hmm. in aggressive wars that were kicked off by false flag operations known as 9-11. Right. And you know, these people have incredible, they're giving birth to babies with birth defects. You know, their genomes have been, I mean, there's vast restorative justice. Mm -hmm. Fukushima was a nuclear false flag. We know who the guilty parties are. There's restorative justice. Um, a Mars Protection Treaty, that's our nearest planetary neighbor. It's an inhabited planet with intelligent human civilizations. Right now, the U.S. is attempting to colonize it mm -hmm. as it's attempting to colonize the, the solar system on a covert basis. It's attempting to do so because it wants to annex Mars as 51st state. We want a, a world treaty with Mars, Earth to Mars, as it was prior to the 9500 B.C., solar system catastrophe mm -hmm. when a fragment of the Vela supernova came in to the solar system and greatly damaged the Martian ecology mm -hmm. as, as it did Earth, our, our um, great maritime civilization known as Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And so prior to that, Earth and Mars were a single interplanetary society. That's why we have pyramids both on Earth and on Mars, and they were kind of under the predecessors of the pharaohs. Mm -hmm. Number 14, disestablish. This means they no longer have civil powers. 
disestablished monarchies, disestablished the Vatican, and disestablished state religions. That's a, that's a tall order, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but the, these are policies for the future. Right. Okay. Number 15, a declaration of animal rights and animal personhood. Mm -hmm. Dolphins are persons. Mm -hmm. Whales are persons. We move down, down the chain. Dogs are persons. Monkeys are persons. Primates are persons. Canines are persons. Felines are persons. Cattle are persons. You know? Mm -hmm. Begin. Oh, people have stakes. Well, start getting into, you know, people have gone onto spaceships and they have incredible meals on there that are, that are created out of, out of, uh, uh, you know, artificially, but are just as healthy. Right. You know, they, they can mimic, uh, if you're really into a beef steak, they can mimic it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Right. Uh, Number 16, ethical standards. You know, begin an ethical standard for, gen for gender. Mm -hmm. I mean, women are still under attack under, on this planet. Mm -hmm. Women are still being raped as a weapon of war. Right. The violence against women in our society in every country is enormous and it's hidden. Right. Women are in fear of their lives. Ageism, elder abuse, mm -hmm. child sexual abuse, uh, sexual orientation. We're just beginning to go through all the gay, lesbian, bi, all of that. You know, and the whole issue of sexual orientation, gender orientation. Mm -hmm. Religious and spiritual beliefs. Mm -hmm. People are persecuted, I mean, for their beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, they're, they're, right now there are religious wars going on, which the powers that be, you know, in, in the U.S., it can be shown in any 9-11 investigation that, that the alphabet agencies and, and, and the banks... Mm -hmm were behind 9-11 in order to engender an Islamic Christian uh, battle of civilizations mm -hmm. and of belief systems, Islam versus Christianity versus Judaism. Why? Because they profit off of wars. You know, that's an ethical standard. Race, you know, we're, we're still uh, operating where where uh, race, you know, it's known genetically. I mean, well, I, I just got a gift through the National Geographic's Genome 2 project of my DNA going back hundreds of thousands of years. Hmm. And we all come from Africa. Right. <laughs> We're all Africans. Right, right, right. We're all Africans. Right. I mean... You know, and, and race is, is like, it's just a spectrum, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so race is really a sociological and a psychological construct. Mm -hmm. So uh, getting all through that, but putting all of this on, on the table with ethical standards mm -hmm. so we can be, begin to come. Now, most, so, so that the fear of, quote, a one world government is that this is the new world order, which is controlled by the controllers right. uh, uh, and by the banks mm -hmm. and by the satanic Illuminati. Well, no, that's not this. This is controlled through virtual direct democracy, through uh, uh, respect of spiritual and religious beliefs, through disestablishing monarchies, disestablishing state religions like the Vatican. Why, did, why is the Vatican a state? Because in 1929, uh, the Vatican was able to make a deal with Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator, in the Lateran Treaty that, that made it a state. Hmm. Why should we suffer because of a fascist deal? 
Right. So these policies flow from a positive spiritual and consciousness transformation of humanity that many extraterrestrial, spiritual, prophetic, and future sources tell us will take place in the years going from 2013 through 2017, through 2020, through 2025, and which are the multidimensional context of the initiative that I've just talked about, about the Secretary Generalship. It's really just kind of a platform mm -hmm. context right. to bring in a new, con as part of the new consciousness that is landing, new policies and new leadership. So, and, and in the course of talking about these 16 different policies and more to come, I mean, number 17 is more to come, mm -hmm. um, what we've done is to look at exopolitics and put it in there, you know, mm -hmm. and, and w we could go into a long, each element, we could spend a long time on number one, extraterrestrial disclosure. Well, what does that mean? And, and so uh, I see now that we're almost at, at the beginning of, of or coming to some, uh, uh, time coming into the end of the first hour, but but I I wanted to put this out because it gives a focus, and kind of an uh, an application mm -hmm. to both to the the various lines that I've been working in, which are lines as a futurist, lines as an exopolitician, lines as a war crimes judge. And lines as a citizen concerned about a positive future. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this uh, my understanding is that uh, your colleague Andrew Bizzaggio, I believe he wants to submit a bid for the U.S. presidency in 2016. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, and and in fact, let me uh, let me get let me get this because yeah. Andrew has actually formally endorsed me. Hmm. And uh, what I'd like to do is to read, uh, if I can just get this window down. Oh, my God, everything has become so, uh, oops, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, just let me get this uh, open a bit here. Sure. Oh, well, you, you know how it is. My, uh, oh, let's put this down. And uh, get this, Andrew, uh, let me get this right here. And, uh, sure. Um, okay, here we go. And um, here, this is from Andrew D. Bishago. Mm -hmm. I endorse Alfred Lambert Weber for Secretary General of the United Nations. From environmental protection on Earth to peace in space, Alfred has been at the forefront of the progressive humanitarian causes for the past 40 years. Under his leadership, the United Nations will reclaim its mantle of leadership in bringing about peace, not merely among the nations of Earth, but with the off-planet cultures presently visiting our planet. I think Alfred will make an exceptional Secretary General in the tradition of Doug Hammarskjöld that has seen in the UN the potential to foster a peaceful, sustainable global society, not at war with itself, but with what President Kennedy identified as the common enemies of humankind, war, poverty, ignorance, and disease, Andrew D. Bashago. Mm -hmm. Now, what Andy and I noted was that uh, if you look at at the terms of the forthcoming of the forthcoming uh, of the forthcoming secretary generals and the U.S. president, they're virtually coterminous. Hmm. The next U.S. president will take office on January twentieth, twenty seventeen, and the next secretary general will take office on January 1st, 2017. And in the term after that, 
the next president will take office of the U.S. January 20th, 2021, and the next Secretary General will take office January 1st, 2021. So after his endorsement, I said, I look forward to working with you so that we can coordinate mm -hmm. uh, on mutually on mutually agreed progressive policies uh, 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 to further uh, the positive goals and aims mm -hmm. uh, for 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 humankind. Mm -hmm. So this is a conscious effort. Uh, with Andy as uh, what I believe, what I believe to be what I call an epochal whistleblower. Right. He he was a uh, a childhood participant and a major revelator of the U.S. secret time space program mm -hmm. that the U.S. has had time travel and teleportation for 40 years. Right. Um, he's an individual who was sent back in time to uh, with several other of the young children and the used children in time travel mm -hmm. because um, they didn't have any of the ego issues or physical issues that adults might, might, might have. Mm -hmm. But they sent him back to advise George Washington at a strategic point in the American Revolution, and and uh, and to advise him to withdraw at a strategic point, and if Washington had not withdrawn at that point, he would not have won the revolution, and the United States would not have been born. Wow. And Washington, and it comes back to Washington report that that he had a session with angels who advised him to what to do. And so he interpreted he, the the, the uh, children, the time travelers from Project Pegasus, mm -hmm. who came by a chronovisor uh, and were there in virtual form, as in hologrammatic form, mm -hmm. as angels. But they weren't angels. They were Andy Bashago and a number of his child colleagues who were there with instructions uh, as to what uh, General Washington should do, and they carried an, an official um, and, and a, an official letter mm -hmm. from from uh, uh, the uh, project identifying them. Interesting. And, and so that is how Andrew Bashago had a direct uh, hand in saving and in founding the United States through right. time travel. And and uh, uh, so, it, 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 you know, the, this is sort of uh, and so his presidency, I think, uh, you know, would from a deep moral uh, uh, point of view, uh, as well as you know this this cycle, mm -hmm. uh, having helped George Washington right. found the, the the nation, then at a crucial time. When the United States has is on the verge of of, of having its its constitutional democracy destroyed mm -hmm. because its constitutional apparatus has been captured by what we call the CIA presidency and the CIA time travel captured presidency, mm -hmm. and that's where starting in 1971. Be and Andrew D. Bashago was the person who did this will whistleblowing. Mm -hmm. He he was able to to say uh, and and to show that um, the CIA had used time travel technology to pre-identify <clears throat> future U.S. presidents, mm -hmm. including George Bush Sr. Bill Clinton, George Bush Jr., and Barack Obama, and not only did they do that, but they, but they pre-notified them, and they briefed them. They pre-briefed them twenty to thirty years in advance, and uh, 
George W. Bush and his father, George H.W. Bush, were briefed in 1971, along with Bill Clinton, that they were going to be a future U.S. president. And in 1971, uh, uh, Barack Obama's mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, who was a CIA operative in Jakarta, Indonesia, under cover of AID, mm -hmm. was briefed as to Barack Obama's future identity. His name was Barry Satoru, then his 10-year-old child, uh, as to his future identity as a president of the United States. And, and so they were put, in effect, they, they were uh, put into sort of a secret training, and in effect, they, they became covert agents of the CIA. Mm -hmm. And so the CIA ate the Constitution because they, they had pre-briefed the winners of these elections and, uh, and to bring them into the fold of their policies. And all of the elections, none of the other parties and none of the public, either the U.S. electorate or the media or the world public, knew mm -hmm about the application of time travel in these elections, such that the elections were, practically speaking, charades, because the other people who, the losers in, in the elections were running an election, and they didn't know that they didn't stand a chance. Right, and they spent millions uh, to promote themselves as candidates. But i got to ask you this question, uh, Alfred. Uh, did the CIA know who would be the president after the current president? I mean, do they have anyone who they know that they haven't really mentioned or disclosed to? Okay. That is a very interesting question, and that brings up Andrew D. Bishago's mm -hmm. bid to be president in either 2016 or 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, what Andrew says is that he was in a class uh, in nine, the summer of 1980 at the College of the Siskiyous, which was a training class for the CIA uh, uh, secret jump room program. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of other people were in that, two of whom verify that. One, one of is uh, William Brett Stillings, and the other is Bernard Mendez. And a couple of other, uh, other people were, were in that class, Barry Satoro, Barack Obama, the 18-year-old Barack Obama was in that class, mm -hmm. and um, Regina Dugan, who was Barack Obama's first head of DARPA, mm -hmm. was in that class. She was 18 years old, or 16, I believe. And... and uh, <clears throat> During that class, uh, Stanley Ann Dunham, Barry Satoru's mother, announced that her son, Barry Satoru, Barack Obama, was going to be the first black president of the United States, mm -hmm. that her son was a future U.S. president. Okay? And... In the middle of a class, uh, Andrew de Bishago's father was there, along with William Brett Stilling's father. And Andrew de Bishago's father, Raymond F. Bishago, had been part of the time space, secret time travel teleportation program mm -hmm. since Project Pegasus and had been kind of the control or handler of his son, Andrew, mm -hmm. and close companion. Right. And he turned to his son and said, how does it feel to be in this room with two future U.S. presidents? Meaning Barack Obama mm -hmm. and Andrew B. Bishago. Oh, okay. So his father may have been leaking classified information to him. Mm -hmm. 
that he is a future U.S. president either in 2016 or 2020 or in the future. Now, mm -hmm. this has to be qualified because we don't know totally what, what the father meant, number one. Number two, timelines change. Mm -hmm. Number three, that is, timelines change and you know, it, it may be a different timeline that manifests. Right. Okay? Uh, but Andrew, plus Andrew had other indications from uh, a, a CIA agent who was also one of his contacts there named Courtney Hunt, mm -hmm. Courtney M. Hunt in the CIA time travel program who indicated that Andrew might have been, might be a future U.S. president, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so there is some degree of possibility or probability there. So, but Andrew is going forward on a series of policies to really transform the U.S. Mm -hmm. and to, and you know, to, to, Eliminate the the uh, Fed, which is a private central bank that has essentially been uh, usurping the constitutional right of the U.S. government to print its own currency, right? And, and that has made its currency fiat, and has and has drained all of the wealth of the American people mm -hmm. into interest payments paid back to the banks on its own currency. Right. You know? Right. And, and uh, number two, and into big it, teleportation, a, a public transportation system. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. teleportation uses the fraction of the energy budget that the current fossil fuel petroleum transportation system uses with planes, trucks, buses, r railroads, and cars, mm -hmm. and none of the land use budget. In terms of roads, streets, highways, tracks, railroads, and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then getting rid of the police state, and you know, getting back into all of the positive constitutional policies. Mm -hmm. Now, what I find really interesting, just over the last couple of months or so, is that Bill Clinton. Uh, was pre-informed about his his destiny as a future U.S. president in the early 1970s as part of Project Pegasus. They sat him down and they briefed him, right? Right. And Bill Clinton is married to Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton is now, they're promoting her as... The future U.S. president. That's what it seems like because, in my perspective, it's uh, she's being groomed uh, for the role. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and so, so, and there was a photograph of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton having lunch outside at the White House mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. That to me seemed like they were projecting maybe this is my my overlay onto it mm -hmm. that it was like they they were both people who had both been pre-informed about time travel mm -hmm. about they were going to be future presidents right or was it hillary knowing that her husband was pre-informed by time travel and so she's bluffing <laughs> oh okay. okay okay right and so you have the mainstream media now is promoting hillary mm -hmm. as the last great hope of the new world order <laughs> right 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 and they're kind of setting her up 
as though she has been ignored uh, the the anointed one by by a time travel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she to our knowledge andrew de bashago to my knowledge did not sit in on any briefings of hillary clinton right and if hillary clinton were to be a president in 2016 she would have been briefed right and she would have been briefed in 1971 because she was married to Bill Clinton at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she wasn't briefed. Right. right. To our knowledge. Mm -hmm. So maybe she was briefed secretly. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just raising all of the all the circumstances. Now, it may be that the transformational presidency doesn't come to 20 until the 2020 election, not in the 2016 election. Maybe it comes in 2016. But I know that from my perspective, moving forth on the Secretary General office, which is at the global level, at the, at the world level, mm -hmm. at the planetary level, we're both looking for that, for that transformational moment where, where things aren't as they were. It's right. a new world, right? Right. And, and so there's, you know, we're just moving. And so that could be 2016 because people can go to exopolitics.com and they can see there an interview with Mary Rodwell that we did right. recently. Fascinating interview, by the way. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and Mary, who, who is an expert, she lives in Australia, mm -hmm. for those who, who may not know. And she is an expert who works with crystal children with indigos and, and others who are in contact with extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are taken aboard craft every night or from time to time. It's not only by greys, but by different types of ETs. And it's not malignant greys. It's greys who work with them in terms of consciousness transformation. And they can go there every night. And these are crystal kids. And what the extraterrestrials say is that there's a great shift that is coming. Mm -hmm. And they use, she says, I said, well, when? And she said, well, they keep on hearing the year 2017. Now, hmm. we all know that, you know, putting up 2012, you know, and now it's 2017, i.e., we... This time is not rigid. Right. It's it's a function of consciousness, mm -hmm. and transformation is a function of consciousness. So that the more, if there's more resistance, then it may go beyond 2017. You know. So there's, and then there's there's biblical prophecy. We did another interview with a master. A master hermeneuticist, that is a person who interprets biblical prophecy from a science. Mm -hmm. One of you, his name is Peter Kling. Right. And, and he, what he looked at was a three and a half year period starting from March 21st, 2013, which is, from his perspective, hermeneutics set out in the biblical prophecies. And that's going to be that's a that's a countdown that is happening from uh, 2013 down through 2016, and then by 2017 we're going to have a transformation, mm -hmm. but that there'll be an attempted rollout of the new world order over the next three and a half years, and and uh, coming of you know this is the age of. Of, of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so you can have, you know, people who buy into that consciousness become Antichrist. Right. And then you could have a major figure who kind of channels that energy. There, there, are, there are all kind of rumors out there. There's, there's, there's one story that was published that uh, there's the king of the Anunnaki who was in Africa last month and that's why there was a secret meeting of the three US presidents Obama Clinton and Bush all went to Africa 
last month, which is true. Wow. They had a, they had a secret meeting with the Anunnaki king. You know, th these are rumors. Right. And that it's the Anunnaki king who is the Antichrist. So, you know, we've had no way of verifying that, except that we can verify that that meeting took place. Mm -hmm. Now, why all of a sudden you had a secret meeting of U.S. presidents in Africa is unknowable. I... Mm -hmm. My instinct was that it had something to do with the implementation of the New World Order. Yeah, for three U.S. presidents to attend Africa, that's, um, that's, that's out of the ordinary, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You know? Um, but, Alfred, you know, we're approaching the end of the first hour here. So, you know, we have lots to talk about in the second hour. Uh, would you care to remind our listeners on how they can reach you? Um, your website is exopolitics.com, is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and uh, yeah, so that, that's like a news portal mm -hmm. in, our, in our area, and, and people can, can go there. There's a link at the top. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to email me, just click on that link. And, of course, you can reach me on social media, Twitter. You can go to Facebook. Uh, we, we have a Facebook profile. We have a very active group there and an interactive group mm -hmm. called Alfred Lambert Weber. Mm -hmm. And you can join the uh, group. And in that group, we discuss a lot of the issues that you and I have been talking about for this past hour. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time here to chat with me for the first hour. And I look forward to our second hour here, okay? Excellent. Okay. Thanks again, Alfred. Okay. I'll talk to you sure. soon. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's it for the first hour on As Above, So Below Radio. Tune in for the second hour by subscribing to HolisticAdvocate.com where Alfred will further impart his insights on the clarification on the function of galactic governance, that our ascension is not an exact science, but more dependent on our consciousness, the breakdown of the old order and resulting earth changes, and the exopolitical battle occurring on the planet Will this planet be under dark forces or under upper dimensional human hands and much more?
You're listening to As Above, So Below Radio.